Okay, in this presentation, we're going to get you started writing Python code outside of Colab. Colab is outstanding. It's easy. The packages are already installed. However, uh, if you're going to write code, um, particularly at a company, often you you know you, you can't write it on some sort of something that might be hosted elsewhere. Uh, and um, you know, Colab does have some downsides. Every time you start the uh, if you install any package, every time you restart the kernel, you have to reinstall the package and so forth. So at some point, pretty soon, you're going to want to start developing on your own computer, either because it's for ease of package management or because uh, you're writing code for your company or so forth. So what this is going to do, this presentation, is I'm just going to get you started on, you know, or give you an idea of what you should use to write Python on your on your own on your own computer, uh, and um, and sort of what you look for in tools to write Python on your, on your own computer. So again, um, uh, it's just a rehashing. We're work, we're, we work. We want to work outside of a Jupyter notebook, um, and some reasoning why. Uh, you can also run Python commands as a script. Um, so. Often you'll see, uh, you know, somebody refer to Python scripts and so forth. Uh, one, so in other words, what we're going to do in this um, in this uh, presentation is, is just work with some code I have here in, in a file I call Python. And so it's this code. It's just going to um, uh, import some libraries. Uh, notice that because I have these libraries installed on my own computer, I don't have to install them first as we would have to install on Colab. Uh, but it's just going to... Um, pull some data and plot some prices. So, of course, you can write this. This is just text and you can write in any text editor you want. Um, not like Word, but any so like Notepad, anything that just deals with plain text. You could write this in plain text and write it um, and, and sorry, run it with uh, just calling Python at the at a, a command line, whether Windows or, or, or Mac or, or Linux, and it'll go ahead and run the code, and it pulls the data, and it plots the prices, right? So, um, so you can always run code like that. But what we're going to do is take a look at development environments that are going to help you write the code, and then it's also going to evaluate the code for you line by line in, in a REPL similar to Colab. But you always have that option to simply run it as, as a script. Note, I do... I have assumed that you have Python on your system. Uh, I'm not going to go over how to install. I mean, you can go to just uh, Google Python and, and download um, it from python.org. Uh, I believe that's the website of it. And um, it, But I'm not going to go over that here because it would be different for Windows. It, it, Python comes with any Linux. Uh, I'm not sure whether it comes with a Mac, but in Windows you'll have to download it. And, it's quite simple, but um, specific to your own operating system. So I'm just assuming you have Python already installed here. Good. Uh, excellent. So you can always run it as a script, um, but an IDE is going to, to provide a very nice interface with this underlying P Python process. So that's what we want to take a look at here. So in general, what an integrated uh, development environment uh, provides you is code completion so it gives you suggestions saying you, you, you want to uh, um, do you mean this do you mean this do you mean this and th this is very helpful so I don't necessarily have to remember exactly uh, you know uh, well I don't have to I, it saves me typing a lot and sometimes I might not exactly know the command but it'll complete it and so I can pick and know it when I see it uh, and Colab provided this so we, we, we saw this in Colab uh, linter, this is where it shows you, um, it, it'll notify you if there's anything wrong in your code. So it'll check your code. So that's, uh, so a linter is, is extremely powerful. Uh, and, uh, an IDE also provides uh, integrating, uh, integration with uh, documentation, and you saw this in Colab. So when you start typing a function, it'll bring up the documentation of the function. Again, very powerful. Um, ID will also allow you to in, uh, interact with your operating system, create files, create directories, and so forth. And also, it integrates with version control with Git. So that, um, uh, and, and that's in, in, in another uh, session, but uh, so that you can manage the version control uh, from the uh, devel development environment and, and not from the terminal. So we're going to take a look at a couple different um, sort of IDEs here. And the first is what I would absolutely recommend. I think this is what most people would recommend that you use is Visual Studio Code. This is a Microsoft product. 
Um, Visual Studio Code can be used for any language, uh, uh, pretty much. Um, uh, it has a, it's very, it, it comes customized and, and if you open a particular Python file, it will automatically attempt to um, uh, give you a linter, it'll, it'll install everything that you need to interact with Python, right? So it doesn't come with support for every language in the base. What happens is if you open up a Rust file, right, it'll say, which is a programming language, it'll say, uh, you know, do you want to use these tools or do you want to install these tools um, that will help you write Rust code? So similarly with Python, if, if you open a Python um, uh, file, it'll say, you know, do you want to install this, 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 and that. Uh, so it's, um, you can get started just immediately, right? So in other words, on day one, you're very productive writing uh, uh, Python in, in, in Visual Studio Code. So general purpose, easy learning curve, uh, little setup time, and, and very widely used. So, so um, that is definitely what I would recommend. And what we can do is jump over here into VS Code. And so this is Visual Studio Code. Um, this is sort of the, the default um, color scheme and everything. You can, you can change all of the interaction uh, with VS Code simply uh, through menus, which is, uh, which is very nice. Um, uh, so, you know, for example, I have added these things called Vim key bindings and so forth. Uh, but uh, the idea here is uh, if I want to run this, I already have uh, all the Python stuff installed, meaning um, it already recognizes as a Python file and so forth, but this will automatically be installed for you. You just have to click yes. Uh, but here I think uh, hit shift enter. Um, it actually wants me to install the IPython kernel, which I'm, I'm not gonna do at this point. But um, so all I'm doing here is hitting shift enter and it uh, sends the line over and I can highlight if I want to run um, many things at once, I can then highlight them all and, and it, it'll send all of that. But uh, so, you know, I have nice interaction with my REPL here. I have my code file, and then I have uh, it ev evaluating here, uh, and I can see the results here. And I can actually, actually just simply type stuff in here if I want. So if I wanted to, um, to see, you know, ETH, right, and I don't know, time. So I can, I can interact with it right here. Uh, now, this also is going to give me, again, um, code completion and so forth. So if I do pandas uh, and let's say I come up with a, uh, see, it'll have a data frame right here. Um, actually, let me, uh, data, see right there we have, uh, it completes it with data frame. I should be able to say, click this, uh, apologies. And I want to see the documentation. VS Code is not my daily driver, but uh, the idea is I should be able to see the documentation here pretty easily, maybe by hovering over it or something. Um, but the idea here is, again, it's automatically completing for me. Um, let me see. So if I, if I just installed CB Pro and I'm not sure what I have here, I can say, okay, well, you know, I can start G, get product historic rates. Um, and so forth. So it has uh, has a nice auto completion, uh, and then again, it has great documentation where it'll pop up with the documentation uh, for you. So again, VS Code is absolutely you know what I would recommend. I want to show you also a nice feature of VS Code while I was here. So we've been working in these Colab notebooks, and um, if you want, you can download these Colab notebooks and download them as an IPython notebook. Uh, and as you see, uh, it's it's automatically saying, uh, would you like to open with, this is Visual Studio Code. So if I go OK, it's going to go ahead and download this. Uh, and I, it very well might use, yeah, it's using my original um, one here. And here's my IPython notebook. Let me actually, yeah, so actually right here. Uh, let me move this rebel. So it downloaded it and... Um, I trust this notebook. It downloaded it, uh, and I can go ahead and start, you know, running the code uh, through here. So it, it automatically, you know, and so this is uh, this is the IPython. This is the equivalent of a Colab notebook. This is an IPython notebook, uh, just in Visual Studio Code. So you can take all of your Colab notebooks and immediately 
uh, just simply download them and start working on them in VS Code right here. So VS Code, like I said, is great. Uh, over here, you see a lot of different extensions that I have. You may not have these this is to work with PostgreSQL databases, Amazon Web Services, and so forth. Uh, but you can easily add these things here. Um, this should be the uh, extensions where you can go in and, and start adding a different extensions. I have Git Lens. This is uh, uh, so it'll show me, you know, right here. Um, who made the change, what was the commit, and so forth. So it's a, it's a really great uh, editor. Another one that I wanted to mention here along the lines with it is Atom. Uh, I wouldn't recommend you use this. This, this uh, It's the editor uh, that was created by GitHub, and then GitHub was acquired by Microsoft, so I'm not sure. Uh, it, it's still supported. It's still probably widely supported, but now it's it's a, sort of a little internal competitor with Visual Studio Code, and it doesn't. It's a little bit harder to set up. So the idea here is it's it's pretty point and click, but um, but uh, it's it's just not as easy as VS Code where everything pops up and. Um, automatically installs for you just clicking yes so so Adam is nice um, I would still probably well I'd still definitely point you to VS Code uh, there's there are you know so I talk a little bit about Adam here um, there's a couple ones I, I won't actually show you they're they're great but they're spider and pie charm uh, these have a lot of the features of VS Code just built in so but spider and pie charm are, are specifically for Python so whereas VS Code, you open up a Python file and it's going to say, okay, well, I see you're editing Python. Do you want me to install a bunch of this stuff? And you just hit yes. Spider and PyChub have all of that already installed. A linter already installed uh, um, and so forth. Um, but the, uh, so, so obviously there's no setup there and they're very easy learning curve. The only downside to them is they're Python specific. So, uh, so long as you only want to write Python code um, or, or rather you're, you're just focused on Python code, then, then absolutely go ahead with Spider. Check out Spider, check out PyCharm. Um, they are fairly widely used. I don't particularly use them simply because while I write a lot of Python code, I also write code in other languages and so I would like my IDE to to work across languages. Um, I also don't use it because it's a GUI, and that's why I also don't use VS Code. Uh, so, but that's uh, different reasoning. I'll talk about that in a second. The last two here to talk about, I do not recommend that you use. However, I figured I would talk about them because they are very widely used. Uh, they they are what I use, um, and. Uh, so and so, I just want to introduce them to you so, so you know that they exist. Uh, so um, these are Emacs and Vim, and if you ever have a little bit of spare time, you can look up the Editor War uh, and on Wikipedia, Editor War, Text Editor War, uh, and it'll talk a little bit about the history of Emacs and Vim. Um, they, they're old editors. Um, Vim is a... a, 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 a sort of wrapper around VI, which is itself a wrapper around an old editor called ED. So we're going back to the 60s and 70s here. Similarly, Emacs um, uh, is a whole class of editors that goes back to the 70s. Uh, Emacs is going to be basically a Lisp evaluation environment, uh, whereas Vim is more focused on being a text editor. So I'll just give you a little bit of a feel about Emacs and Vim here. I'm actually going to use a different version called NeoVim. But, um, but so here I can, so this is opening it up in, in um, NeoVim. So now the, the downside to using this is uh, I have to do a lot of configuration to make this happen, right? So the idea here is if default, if you just opened up a file in a, in a base uh, NeoVim, it, would, uh, it wouldn't know anything about it being Python. It doesn't care. It would just open it up as any other text file. So I had to install a bunch of packages and do some configuration. And so when you have work in Emacs and Vim, you have these very large configuration files that tell it how to, to work. So I have to configure it. But once I've configured it, I have a nice um, IPython notebook. I have a REPL where I can just, just like VS Code, send this in um, and so forth, right? Uh, I have here, you know, I'll bring up a, I'll bring up a chart here. I'll print the data, bring up a chart. Um, plot show, plot show. Oh, it's um, a closed plot. Uh, that's fine. Um, so the, it has code completion and so forth. So the idea here is if I say, 
pandas and I start data frame, uh, note that it that it comes up here with data frame and then right here it has the, the documentation for data frame. So this is, um, again, this is outstanding. I can scroll the date offset, right? So you see it scrolls the date offset here. This gives me the documentation for that so I can start seeing what I want, right? Uh, CB Pro. And I can start, and it brings up all the um, every uh, all the functions available in CB Pro. So, um, and then again, right, it's bringing up the documentation uh, for a lot of these where where it's available. Uh, so this is again, you, you're not when you when you go over to to Vim and Emacs, you're not losing anything uh, that you don't. Um, uh, that that is not VS Code, right? There's also you can see here I have this under version control, so it's saying you're adding these lines uh, and so forth. So, um, and what you see here is I can run this in a terminal uh, and then also not run it as a GUI. So I can, um, again, run it as, as a GUI uh, and as a uh, terminal as well, right? So if I want, I can say N, uh, you know, uh, right, and run it in a nice GUI frame like this. Um, this here is my linting, right? So it's 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 saying uh, you should have a white space after the comma here and so forth. So it's it, it's giving me a lot of stuff to improve my code. What I'm doing here is I'm just turning it off. But the idea, you know, so I, I just turned off the linter. But the idea here is that by default it'll start showing me uh, what's wrong with my code. Um, so and again, now I'm I'm in a GUI frame, and um, and I can still just turn around and, and run it like that. So. Uh, so, uh, in sum, uh, Vim, you know, uh, and Emacs will, you know, and I can show you Emacs here real quick. I have a, a, a highly configured version of Emacs running right now. So I can just say Emacs, I'll bring it up. I can bring it up in a, in a terminal frame, but I'll also just bring it up in a GUI right here. Uh, so here, um, I, uh, I'm running Again, this is kind of a highly configured uh, version of um, Emacs, um, and actually, I don't have uh, LPI, which I which I normally run. So I'll just run a simple um, uh, Python process using Run Python. Uh, but uh, you can have better um, uh, versions of of Python interaction here. What is uh, I usually use something called LPI. I'm just going to highlight all of this and say um, send uh, Python send, uh, what do we want to send? Send region, CCCR, right? So it went ahead and sent it uh, down there. So now I can say ETH, right? And it read it in there. Um, so again, e, you know, Emacs is gonna be a little, very similar to Vim. Uh, so I just kind of wanted you to see these uh, to, but um, but if again to get to moving directly from a collab into into um, writing Python code, I definitely would recommend VS Code. I'll give this a shot, and as you write more and more code, you can um, because again you want to get in and you want to get in and be productive as soon as possible. So um, so I would start here and then. Later, if you want to build a config at some point, you can you can work in Emacs and Vim. And like I said, I'm in e Emacs or Vim all day, um, so you know it's it's well worth it. But it, it takes quite a while to, to 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 get a good config. Excellent. I think that is uh, most of what I want to say. Um, this is you know so how to pick an IDE. Often you know you'll generally use the IDE that everyone else uses. Uh, which is perfectly fine. So that's that's if you ask people, you know, how do they start using, why did they start using Emacs, or why did they start using Vim, uh, they'll say something like this. Um, you know, however, otherwise, I would just use VS Code, uh, unless you really know you want to focus on Python, then use a, a Python-specific Python IDE. And eventually, if you would like a bit of a challenge, you can look at Emacs or Vim. Uh, great. I think um, I think that's it. Uh, have a great day.